discuss a bit. And I wish I could say a whole bit. This trial was planned on May 14th, 
And then about a week later, on May 23rd, I fly a uh, sure start at 2.4 Label. I didn't add the adjuvants though. Uh, we just used the appropriate adjuvants and I did work with uh, both Bayer and BSF to get their input on what would be their best choices with their products to use as a post-emergence uh, control of Canada thistle. So the very first one is just Roundup. Roundup uh, Parmax this will be the second application that I made and at 20, 22 fluid ounces so that'd be the, the three-quarter um, ounce back to a bassin equivalent. And um, not much Canada still so in this particular line. Uh, there's three other reps and then the, the treatments are randomized so it isn't round up all the way through. There's other products. Uh, this is wide match. Uh, makes sense. Wide match has clopyrid in it in it. And uh, yeah you can see the growth regular impact with uh, with the clopyrid in it. And this is a wide match at 21.3 fluid ounces. This is a bear product from Reno. This is 3 fluid ounces plus atrazine. On there, uh, we applied a pint of, of the um, Atrix 4L as uh, to help boost the, the activity of the various products. In this case, This is a Syngenta product, Halex GT, and this also has Atrix. And this is a Bear's product called Lattice, uh, three fluid ounces. You saw that this morning in the, the herbicide mode of action demo. Uh, these are not the correct symptoms. When I sprayed on Monday, Monday afternoon, there was low wind, but I sprayed with uh, Status next to it. And uh, we got a little drift over on, onto this trial. So, but that's not typical where we'd see the epinasty of the stem with uh, lattice. You guys remember what lattice looked like for the mode of action demo? Bleaching, yeah. And it's a little bit hard to tell in here. I looked at a couple other treatments uh, with the lattice, uh, some of the back reps. The third rep in particular, I can see the bleaching there. more ounce to it and so we applied it at two rates five fluid ounces and ten fluid ounces so here's the five here's the ten so at this point it's probably the these two are the I guess in my opinion the most impressive treatments but we'll see how it goes a little later in the season I plan to evaluate um, maybe I'll wait a month before I evaluate I'll just see how things uh, roll and then the evaluate one, two, and three months into the season, and then we'll see what happens after that. And then the last treatment is another bear product, a brand new one that they have. It's Amazon, and uh, I suggest a one ounce rate, and then also atrazine is with it. And again, the appropriate adjuvants are included. I just didn't write them on the stakes. We're not going to take the corn to yield just because kind of thistle's always patchy and and uh, the yield we generate it's it's uh, it'd be questionable based on some good kind of thistle here and on the end very little so we're really after the kind of thistle control we thought corn would be a really good crop to
Leeds guy, I'm really excited about this, but I don't quite see the excitement in your faces. This corn study is uh, part of a, actually a long-term study we've been doing looking at uh, initially tilling systems, and then we've expanded with uh, starter fertilizer placement, and then most recently uh, we're looking at two different row spaces, 22 and 30 inch. But uh, since we just talked about Canada thistle, I want to tell you what we did here on the on the Canada thistle. We have some, some pretty good patches in here. So um, see this trial was planted on May 14th. The same date as our a Canada thistle trial. And uh, I thought I'd wait as long as I could to make sure all the Canada thistle was up before we made uh, the initial treatment. And that treatment was made on, on June 3rd. The corn was up. Um, the can of thistle, most of it was all up. Uh, I used Ronda Parmax at two pints and then Sure Start at, at two pints as well, plus appropriate adjuvant. So a little bit less Sure Start in this as compared to the trial over there. And then about a week ago, we followed up with uh, glyphosate and Lumax. And so this is after two pretty heavy duty treatments on the Canada thistle. And it's taken its toll, but I bet we're going to have some regrowth. And if you look close, you'll also see uh, field bindweed present. So I'm sure there'll be another post application of something in order, in order to keep the can of this on the field bindweed down. Well, everybody has their hand out, so I'll. Uh, Make a few comments about our, our previous data and then I'll just tell you what we're doing this year on the trial. Uh, the first slide is just general recommendations. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> uh, is a general recomm recommendations from NDSU on starter fertilizer for corn. So I'm not going to talk about that. You can look it over. The next slide is a compilation of four site years of data comparing the starter fertilizer um, options for application that we've experimented with. So the fall deep band, um, this is a strip tail system. So we're putting that 1034 down at four to five inches uh, in the fall. And then uh, the treatments that we were comparing were in furrow, two by zero band where the corn is planted two inches deep and then the fertilizer was applied two inches horizontally from the seed versus a two by two where the fertilizer would be two inches over from the seed and then two inches further down. So you see uh, the four set years of data. Keep in mind the soil test levels and the amount of 1034 0 we're using. We did see a, a response of the two by zero band and also the fall deep band. Third slide is just one set year data comparing 22 to 30 inch rows. And uh, just one year of data, we show about a 5% increase with uh, the narrower rows. Now, <clears throat> Walt, uh, in the past, he's had a fair amount of data with 15-inch rows in corn versus 30. And if I remember correctly, at least eight set years of data, uh, there was a, a yield advantage with the narrower row, but it was about 1.5% yield increase compared to 30. So if we ever get energy beads off the ground, we suspect there'll be 22 inch equipment out here and we thought it'd be important to see uh, have some data with 22 inch corn so that's that's kind of driving this part of the trial so what are we doing this year a lot of things are the same uh, the roll spacing is the same and also uh, the starter fertilizer application methods are similar with one exception and that is a, I included a broadcast application <clears throat> so um, the intention was for fall strip tillage. We didn't get it done because of, uh, mainly because of weather. So we spring strip tilled. <coughs> and then uh, the soil test level for phosphorus was five parts per million. So quite low. We used 1034-0 and our treatments are deep band. Of course, spring strip till deep band. Um, <coughs> we applied 12 gallons of 1034-0 as deep band. As, uh, as two by zero, and then uh, we split the deep band and infurrow. We have six gallons deep band, and then a planting time six gallons as infurrow, which would be the upper limit of what we're comfortable with to avoid any any crop injury. 
And then, of course, NDSU says that when you look at our fertilizer tables, there are broadcast rates. And so I upped the rate of 1034-0 by one-third. So I used 18 gallons of 1034-0 as a broadcast application. And then, of course, we have untreated check. Uh, so far, I've taken plant emergence notes, and then we've also uh, taken stand counts. So I do have the first rep labeled, uh, the first treatments here. The first five treatments are the 30-inch roll spacing, and then if you go down further, it's the 22-inch rolls with the same uh, fertilizer <coughs> treatments. So if you're interested, you can, <coughs> you can look. I, I'm not sure you'll see any differences in the corn. Uh, you might be interested in taking a closer look at the Canada thistle.